Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to the course of digital signal processing. Today we will continue chapter number 4, lecture number 7, sampling of continuous time signals. Previously we talked about sampling of continuous time signals and we represented the Fourier transform of x of n which is just this frequency scale version of continuous Fourier transform and we also talk about sampling a signal at different sampling rates and checking that we are getting the same discrete time signal and then using the same sampling time for different signals we, are, we also analyze that we are getting the same discrete time signals. In today's lecture we will talk about the reconstruction of a time domain signal in reconstruction of a continuous time signal in time domain so we will use the effects from the reconstruction filter and we will use the time domain version of the reconstruction filter so let's get started so the contents of today's lecture are reconstruction of band limited signals from its samples i have told you signal is said to be band limited if it's like zero after certain frequency Whatever the Nyquist frequency of the signal or the maximum frequency of the signal is, it is zero after that particular frequency. A signal is said to be band limited. So, first of all, just look at the block diagram. This is the reconstruction system. You have x of n at the input. First of all, we we do the opposite of sampling. First, we convert the impulses, the sequence to impulse train. So we have x of n, we convert x of n to impulse train. So we have to input the value of sampling time. Okay. So once we have information of sampling time, we get sampled impulses. Now, if we know that on sampled impulses in frequency domain, we apply a ideal reconstruction filter. So here, in once we have the sampled impulses, we apply a reconstruction filter impulse response in order to get xc of t so if you see the equation xs of t how we obtain the sampled impulses we simply multiply okay we some simply multiply x of n with delta of t minus nt so that is how you basically input the values of sampling time so we now we have converted the sequence to impulse train now next thing is to pass this signal so we have this signal x s of s so next in the first stage we have obtained this signal this is obtained here now x of n x s of t have all these things this will go through this system if this is an lts system we will have its response so we know that if at input this is scaling x of n it will remain as it is the impulse response will change to frequency response sorry the impulse response this impulse will change to impulse response so at the output of the system x r of t will be equal to summation at the input summation at the output scaling at the input scaling at the output impulse at the input impulse response at the output so this h r of t this h r of t is the impulse response this is the impulse response this is the shifted impulse response this is the impulse response so let's look at how this impulse response looks like in next slide so we have seen many times that the ideal reconstruction filter looks like this it has gain of t and it has a cutoff frequency of pi by t which we get from this we know that cutoff frequency is half of the sampling so we know that sampling frequency is 2 pi by t divided by 2 so 2 gets cancelled with 2 so this is equivalent to pi by t so either we can write pi by t or we can use that the cutoff frequencies between these two points omega n is the Nyquist frequency and thus this is the first copy right hand side sorry left hand side okay so either we can use cutoff frequency to be between omega n and omega s minus n or we can use a cut of frequency to be half of the sampling or pi by t and gain t this is our reconstruction filter and we call it ideal because 
in pass band it has exactly t amplitude and there is no transition this is quick from 0 to 1 this is quick from 0 to 1 and then from 1 to 0 so we know that if we have scare wave in frequency domain its inverse Fourier transform will be a sync function okay so this is a pair if we have sync in frequency domain we will have scare in time domain so we know that we know that the Fourier transform the if I take the inverse Fourier transform of this I will get this thing sine omega t divided by pi t where omega is equal to pi by t this is the cutoff limit okay so the simple thing is that take off take the inverse Fourier of this for inverse Fourier we know that the formula is 1 by 2 pi integral minus pi by t to pi by t function is 1 the amplitude is t e raised power j omega t d omega so if you integrate this you will get sine omega t by pi t okay so just the inverse for your transform of this we have already seen this in chapter number two so if you take the inverse for your transform of this we will get this expression sine omega t sine w t divided by pi t and we can say that the Fourier transform the continuous Fourier transform of this is this if I have this impulse response in time domain and I take the Fourier transform I get this thing okay if I have this in frequency domain, I have taken I have take inverse Fourier transform. I will get this impulse. So, equation 11 H R is the inverse of H R j omega. So this is the inverse. So simplifying, we get sine. Just substituting the value of W that is pi t divided by pi t into t. Okay so what we have done here we have basically make, make made it a sync function we have made it a sync function so this is a sync function take okay sine of theta divided by theta the argument here and the argument here is same okay so let's move on to next slide So we know that we have required a reconstruction filter that was HR of T. HR of T was equal to sine of pi T divided by T divided by pi T into T. Here we need a shifted version. According to the block diagram, we were required to have T minus NT. So in the in the impulse response, we have replaced t with t minus n t. So this is an again a sync function because the argument above this and this are same. So we will have maximum at zero. So what we have to do basically, if you look at this, this is just like a convolution. We have to convolve x of n with response of h r of t minus n t so here is the convolution actually if you have to do reconstruction in time domain what we have to do we have to convolve x of n with this sync function okay so the reconstruction will take place this again this is again the block diagram of RTL reconstruction filter so I have told you that first phase is to convert impulses to sequence so how we can convert impulses to uh, sequence to impulses by multiplying it with 
periodic impulse train once we get sampled impulses we can multiply whatever we are getting the signal here with the impulse response of this ideal reconstruction filter so this is basically like convolution and in shorter form we can simply say d to c all we need to do is to give the sampling time value to d to c and it will give you the reconstructed signal so in previous lecture we saw that if x of n we know that this is the relationship for sampling in time domain now if we have this signal and x c of g omega is zero for omega greater than pi by t this is just the example of uh, what should mm, this is just the condition for band limited signal so the band limited signal is one which is zero beyond this point beyond this point half of the sampling because we know that half of the sampling is 2 pi by t divided by 2 which is equal to pi by t so if signal is zero beyond half of the sampling we will have accurate reconstruction so there are three things number one the condition that is missing that we must need to follow the Nyquist criteria then if we sample a signal like this we know that spectrum is zero for certain after certain frequency then we have a accurate reconstruction okay so the properties of d to c converter can be easily understand with the help of frequency domain representation we have the input output relationship as you can see in equation 4.23 that recovered signal is basically what input signal and the impulse response of the ideal reconstruction filter if I take the Fourier transform of this 4.23 equation we know that recovered signal Fourier transform will be XR J omega summation will remain summation X of n is just the scaling it will remain scaling this is the impulse response it will be converted into frequency response and then this is the shifting the shifting will be represented with the help of exponential okay how much shift is there basically tn is the shift okay so if you see we are summing with respect to n so this is a constant term i can take this term out of the summation so what we are left with inside summation is x of n e raised power minus j omega t n so if you look at this equation this is basically the equation of taking the Fourier transform of what signal x of n which is x e raised power j omega t this is the Fourier transform so this is the Fourier transform so what we have to do we have to apply the reconstruction filter on the Fourier transform of x of n so we will get the recovered signal so this is the reconstruction explanation in frequency domain let's move on to the next slide so read out section 4.3 of the Oppenheim book if you have any question you may ask me in next lecture also practice the problem 4.24 as it is related to reconstruction of the continuous time signal 